Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and what you're looking at right here is what we believe a typical quasar looks like. Quasars, which are essentially these extremely bright objects, with the brightness itself being formed by the central black hole inside a relatively massive galaxy, have been quite thoroughly studied for the past 70 years since their original discovery. And today we understand quite a lot about them, but to some people, especially to, I guess to people that are not necessarily scientists, they may actually mean nothing. And so in this video I wanted to give you some examples of why studying quasars is so important for a lot of things around us today, and also connected to the recent extremely successful mission whose success entirely depended on our understanding of the quasars around us. But more importantly, I wanted to connect it to the technology we all use today that actually depends on quasars pretty much every single second. And so, what are quasars and why do we need them? First of all, obviously quasars, like I mentioned before, are just these extremely bright galaxies. Most of them are extremely far away, with the closest quasar to us being this object right here, known as IC2497. This is at a distance of about 700 million light years away from us, and it's actually what's known as a former quasar. It's a quasar that just shut down, making this just a regular galaxy now. But of course, just like stars, a typical quasar, or actually all of the quasars, appear as these really, really tiny objects in the night skies, some of which are extremely bright, although a lot of them are usually bright in the radio waves. But when you look at stars, for example, which normally form constellations, we know that many stars have been used as a type of a navigation tool for many different centuries by many different cultures. For example, I remember when I was younger, I was taught to find the northern star, Polaris, because most of you are probably aware, it sort of points at the approximate north, the geographic north of our planet, and by finding the star you can then figure out where east and west is. Essentially, it's a way for us to kind of geolocate ourselves on our planet. But the thing about stars, though, is that they obviously move across the night skies, even though they move really, really slowly. For example, one of the main purposes of telescopes like Gaia is to discover the vector of velocity of these stars and to try to predict where they're going to end up in the next few thousands or millions of years. And so because of this, even though we originally used stars for many different types of navigation, and even different spacecraft used stars to try to locate where exactly they were in the solar system, today we know that stars are just not very good at it because they do change their location, and also because they appear different from different parts of the solar system. For example, this beautiful picture taken by the New Horizons probe shows us how the star location of Proxima Centauri changed from when the mission was close to Earth to when the mission was on the outskirts of the solar system. And because of this very obvious change in the parallax of the star, it would be practically impossible for us to use a star like this to try to navigate across the solar system. But in the last couple of decades, especially with the advances in technology, we realized that there is something much, much better than a typical star, a quasar. These objects are extremely bright, they also produce radio waves, and because they produce radio waves, they actually are visible from planet Earth and are not hidden from us by the atmosphere itself. In other words, they are visible with typical radio telescopes. Also, just like stars, they do appear as these tiny, tiny bright objects in a distance, but unlike stars, because of the distances involved here, they do appear as these stationary objects that never move anywhere. And because of this, quasars naturally form a perfect tool for navigation. And so even though it was quite possible for us to navigate planet Earth by using stars back in the days, we would now have to start using something completely different. Because of the advances in technology, and also because a lot of our tools require a lot more precision than stars can offer, we now have to start looking at entire galaxies, at quasars, and use them for navigation. And so for the past few years, a lot of these really large radio telescopes have been responsible for pinpointing the exact location of every known quasar to us, with the main purpose of this being establishing an extremely accurate map and an extremely accurate guidance system. And well, guess what? Today, you depend on this guidance system for a lot of different technology and a lot of different tools you use in daily lives. But in this video, I just wanted to focus on one of them. GPS system, the system that we use here on Earth to navigate. And though the GPS system has been around for quite some time, 
The question here is, what exactly tells these satellites where things are located? In other words, how exactly does this system work? And what do quasars have anything to do with any of this? Now, you might have seen this video before, but essentially this kind of shows you how GPS system works by triangulating the exact location of a typical object like this airplane and then showing us exactly where it's located on planet Earth. But what exactly is happening here? Well, first of all, a satellite itself mostly transmits two types of data. It transmits the exact time on this satellite, which is usually measured using atomic clocks, and as you might have heard before, also relies on the ideas from Einstein's theory of relativity. And that's because the time for the satellite moves at a slightly different speed to the time on planet Earth. But at the same time, each of these satellites also transmits the exact position in its orbit because in order for us to calculate where exactly we're located, we also have to know exactly where the satellite is located. And so by using the time and of course the location of the satellite, the receiver in your car or even inside your cell phone can then triangulate the exact position of you on planet Earth. But there are a lot of different government websites that explain all of this in more detail if you actually want to know how all of this triangulation works. What's not answered here though is how the satellites themselves know exactly where they are. What's telling these satellites where they're located compared to, for example, a point on planet Earth? And the other thing that's never mentioned is that our planet actually changes quite dramatically throughout the day. One of the reasons it changes so much is because of the tides exerted by both the sun and the moon. The lunar and the solar tides transform the structure of the planet and the actual size of the planet just enough for most of these satellites to become confused pretty quickly. So something has to correct and something has to guide these satellites to tell them where they're located in their orbit. And in order to know their orbit, we need to understand the exact orientation of planet Earth every single second. And so naturally, some of the first attempts at using this technique was to use stars and to use some sort of a known constellation to try to establish what the planet's orientation was and to then try to transfer this data to different satellites. Unfortunately, as I mentioned before, this is not very accurate. And so back in 1995, the scientists created this map you see right here, known as International Celestial Reference Frame, ICRF for short. And in the last few decades, we've actually advanced this to the point where now this map is very, very complex. But this ICRF map essentially shows you an extremely precise coordinate system that's been used by anything from spacecrafts to essentially every single tool we have today that depends on satellite technology. With the one that's being used right now, known as ICRF3, that sort of looks like this. And by then, essentially projecting each of these quasars onto the surface of our planet, we can establish the exact position of different things on the planet. And since quasars, unlike stars, are pretty much motionless in the night skies, we can use them to pinpoint the exact location of pretty much anything, anywhere, at least in our galaxy. And this map right here, created by Daniel Cummings, shows you the 212 different quasars used by the GPS system in order to establish the exact positions of things on planet Earth. And by knowing where things are on Earth, like for example where a certain um, radar dish is located, we can then establish where the satellites are located and give them the extremely precise position that is then transmitted to each of these satellites. In other words, the ground station tells the satellite where it is located. And when the satellite gets this data, it then just retransmits it back along with the measurements of time it has from its atomic clocks. And when a typical GPS signal gets to planet Earth, or essentially when different GPS receivers catch these signals, they then use this data to try to triangulate their positions. Normally, because of the orbits involved here, at least four different GPS satellites are needed to triangulate a typical position somewhere on planet Earth. But each of these satellites has to receive its position, its own position, from the ground station, which uses Quasar Map to establish the exact position of itself first. In other words, the process works as follows. You get the Quasar data, which by itself forms this catalog known as ICRF, which then has to be converted to what's known as GCRS or the Geocentric Celestial Reference System, 
This data is then sent to the GPS ground stations that calculate the exact position of each satellite and transmit that data to each of the satellites. And following this, each satellite retransmits its data along with its time to essentially anything that's listening on the ground. And this simple yet elegant technology is essentially what allows us to triangulate pretty much everything on the planet and know exactly where things are located. But in the last few years, we also realized how extremely useful all of this is to space navigation as well. And I think the best example of how useful it is, is from the New Horizons mission that visited Pluto back in 2015 and visited another object in 2019. Originally, the mission relied on stars for navigation and for trying to calculate the exact location. But in 2019, when New Horizons was approaching the object now known as Arakoth, something wasn't really adding up. For some reason, when the scientists were trying to take a picture of the approach to this object, they were getting nothing, they were just getting empty space. This meant that there was a slight miscalculation in regards to the actual location of New Horizons. We weren't really getting the correct data. But around the same time, the incredible Gaia telescope had a major release of new star data, which also included a lot of new quasars with extremely precise calculations of their location in the night skies. This new data was brilliant, but it was still untested. And so one of the New Horizons scientists, Mark Buey, who you see right here, convinced everyone to take a chance and upload this data to New Horizons in order for it to try to find out where exactly it was located and to reposition itself. This was actually taking a big risk because if the data was somehow wrong, it meant that we would most likely end up losing New Horizons completely. But a lot of scientists had the faith in this quasar data and once the upload was done and once the probe repositioned itself, it ended up producing some of the most accurate and most brilliant pictures we've ever seen of such a distant object. In other words, even though the object itself was actually relatively small, Due to the quasar data, we were able to know exactly where the probe is located and where this object would be located as well, which would allow us to take absolutely perfect pictures of it. And so this video produced by the probe of the approach to the Arakoth was essentially created using all of this quasar data. And today we're absolutely certain that this is the most accurate data we'll ever have in regards to navigation. Although some scientists believe that maybe, just maybe, we'll find a way to even use something more accurate, like for example the cosmic microwave background. And so, if it wasn't for this data, and if it wasn't for our ability to see these quasars with extremely expensive but also extremely accurate telescopes on the planet, we would not have such an ability to position ourselves in the universe. And what's even more mind-blowing is that some of these observations are so accurate that we've even been able to calculate the exact acceleration of the solar system across the galaxy. And this acceleration is like a size of an atom per second. And this is just to show you how accurate things have gotten in the last few decades. We now know exactly where things are, and we know where to locate things not just on planet Earth, but also in space really far away from planet Earth. But all of this thanks to quasars, the objects that we're still trying to understand and study, but the objects that are absolutely crucial to us for navigation and for a lot of technologies that do depend on satellites and satellite positioning. And although we might one day discover something else that's better in the future, for now this is the best we have. And because of the Gaia telescope and recent discoveries coming from it, our data from quasars now allows us to create a map with approximately several million different spots pinpointing the exact location of things in the universe. And so I guess next time you hear someone say why do we need to study astronomy or what exactly are quasars and how are they useful, well, there's your answer right there. It's extremely useful for knowing where you are and for positioning things in space and on Earth. And if it wasn't for quasars, we probably would have trouble using smartphones, using satellite technology, and most importantly, locating ourselves on planet Earth using the GPS. But on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can see me wearing right now. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.